Hey everybody, welcome to Ellis Mowers. We're going to work on the LT3000 Craftsman that I got for 100 bucks that needs a deck. It runs, it drives, it actually cuts with this deck on it, but it is way too dangerous to use. <laughs> I'll show you that in this video, but uh, got a deck in the back. We just have to transfer a bunch of stuff over to it, fix the brakes, and we'll be able to uh, hopefully sell this thing off. It's in great shape. So let's go ahead and get started. So they're doing some tree cutting outside. That's why I've got the garage closed, at least for this. Um, but here it is. I did post a video of when I went and picked it up. A hundred bucks. Craftsman. LT3000 42 inch cut. We'll get the deck off of it, but again, LT3000 right there. The, uh, well, let me show you the model number and the date code of this real quick. It's a 917-276-813, made, to, or excuse me, April 10th of 2006, 041006. So... Relatively new, and it's confirmed by the date code right there that they put on this era mower. This is kind of, I guess you can call it the last hurrah before the YS series came out. Or they could have like blended them together during this, um, this time. I think this was 06, 07 was like a blend year. Um... But it has a little bit of an extra on it. I don't know why that wire part of the engine cover is missing for the flywheel, like the grass guard for the flywheel. But the engine is actually a 2011, 21 horsepower Briggs Intec. He just said that he replaced the air filter on it and change the oil in it last year he was using this up until the end of the season wanted to try and get one more season out of it but the deck is just too it's just not safe and gentleman was in his 80s as well so yeah 6 11 20 how about that so i don't even have to worry about the filter he even labeled the date that he changed it that's awesome so you can tell that the mower's been maintained for the most part. It's just a little dirty, but look, there's no grass on it. He said every time that he got done with the with the yard, he I don't know if you remember, he said he blew it off, but he at least scraped under the deck to get all the grass and stuff off. So it kind of makes me wonder why the deck rusted out, but he had a decent amount of yard to cut. And uh, I guess over 15, over the course of 15 years, it's going to rust. You can hear the chainsaws now, but it's going to rust out. That's just kind of what these decks do. Some of these decks just had a bad run or something. And uh, just very thin. 12, 12 gauge decks are a lot better. But um, this one's mighty rusty for what it is. One small slit in the seat, that's... That's nothing for these, so I'm not even worried about that. This one's got the steering on this one. They did a good job, and it's very easy to steer. It's very nice as well. A little loose, but works great. Got to put ATF in. Uh, I think that tire's good. Some of these tires are good. Yeah, some of the, this tire's got a tube in it. How about that? That one has a tube in it. I know the right rear does, doesn't, but that one's got a tube in it. How about that? And, yeah, the right rear is the only one that doesn't have a tube in it. It's the only one that leaked air out, which is awesome. I just need to pump the rest of them up. Um, and we'll put some ATF in this rear tire, and we'll that should do beautifully for us. Have a d couple of dust covers that are missing on the rear wheels. I have a couple of dust covers that I'll rob off of another mower. That should uh, take care of that. 
deck. I'll get it off for you. This originally came with a 20 horse Briggs Intec Plus. This is kind of like an up, a little bit of an upgrade over the LT 1000. I think the 2000s had a Kohler and 12 gauge deck. So it's kind of interesting that the 3000 has a Briggs and a non 12 gauge deck, but hey, I don't know how they did the trim levels. Like I said, I'm gonna get the deck off of it, but you can see that this deck should not be used to cut grass with um, at this point. Looks like the deck build is good. Looks like the blade brakes are good. I will have to transfer all the blade brakes and stuff over as well. So uh, I'm going to open up the garage. It's a nice day. And uh, like I said, pardon the chainsaws and the tree cutting if you hear it in the video. Um, neighbors getting the tree cut because uh, after an ice storm, one of them started leaning toward the house. So let's, uh, let's take the deck off. All right, y'all, so here's the decks that I'm going to swap. The original one looks like this. But it has all the hardware, so that's the biggest deal. See, it's starting to rust really bad around the uh, spindles here, so we're not going to try and save this or anything. And obviously, obviously we're going to do the, uh, we got the issues with the, rot right here as well and the bracket and whatnot breaking off there's just nothing left there as well as right there so we're going to check the new deck here we're going to swap all the hardware and stuff over for the blade brakes and whatnot and uh this deck's fully functional it just came off of a mower that had a bad frame or something along those lines so i'll go ahead and switch everything over and put it back on and we will get going with it and the things I got to switch over are these springs, the return springs, the blade brakes, and that should be it. So that should be a pretty quick change here for us. The guys are making pretty good progress. They've only been at it probably for about an hour today. I've already cut the trunk down, which is cool. Um, let me show you while they're doing that, what's, I guess, how you do this. You are going to... Uh, when you take the arm off, it's just a half inch bolt here. And the right side or the left side is a little bit more tricky because you got to get it up under the uh, little cover there. You can take the cover off, but it sometimes can be tricky. And then these are self tappers. I guess some of them don't have self tappers or some of them didn't get put on with tapping screws. There's a washer that goes under it right there, kind of like a little pivot washer. And then you have your bolt. You have to make sure you get it in your groove right here. And we're just going to... I think I've got to tap some threads into this one, but... We'll see what we can get in here. Get them started. Just like that. Let's see if I can impact it the rest of the way. Got the wrong impact socket hang tight. All right, now let's do it. There we go. That should do it for us. And then we have a spring, return spring somewhere right here. So the return spring goes in right here pull it over right there and we have a functioning we have functioning blade brakes now as you can see so that's good and then now i'm going to work on this uh discharge chute next it's just a matter of putting the assembly in and then just pushing the rod through the spring. All right, y'all, here everything is put back together. Like I said, the return, or the springs are working, the blade brakes are working, the uh, mechanism 
tension mechanism. We have the return spring on here. That's something I added. Like I said, I built this deck. I just didn't have any of the blade arms or anything like that. And then I took the discharge chute. And so this deck still had no discharge chute but the spring on it. So all, I had to, all you have to do is pull this rod out and attach the spring. The curved part of the spring goes on top of the discharge chute and then you just bend it, bend it back to let it rest on the deck. And then you just kind of take a hammer and tap your rod through it and that gets you the spring action that you're looking for on the discharge chute. So this is back together. Again, much more solid deck. It's going to look really good with that mower right there. So I'm going to go ahead and get it back on. Again, it's just your two mounting points right here. You mount up here to the uh, height adjusters. One mount back here. You take your spring cable and push it through and hook it onto here with a washer uh, on the bottom there, under it, with a small hook, and that gets you back on. I'll put the uh, deck belt on as well, and we'll give this thing a good test here. All right, those guys are over there making pretty good quick work of what they're working on, and uh, about to take the trunk down. Should be coming down any second now, but we got the deck back on this the new one that i did like i said I did all the work to last year if y'all remember that opposed twin craftsman that i had um that i welded the blades on because the spindles were uh i guess the little keys on the spindles are bad that's this one so i popped it on it looks like everything's working like it is so i'm gonna start it up and we're gonna crank it up and probably pull it over here so I'm not blowing anything back into the garage and we'll give it a nice little cut. Working good, it looks like. It just was stuck right there at the beginning because I need to do a few mo cycles to free it up. But it felt like the brakes were trying to work too, so I'm wondering if I just need to adjust them in a little bit. And we'll see what we got to do there. Well, I think they're working. I think I just need to adjust them in a little bit, which is pretty easy. So. It's back here. Looks like there's a little grass on it. Just like a little. See, there's seven sixteenths or a half inch. I'm just gonna knock it in a couple of, um, couple of turns and see if that works. But I don't see any abnormal wear on the belt or anything. I'll put some ATF in the tire. I'm just gonna ride it around the yard for a little bit. Make sure it runs good, cuts good, stops good, and we'll be in good shape. And. uh I'll give you all a final look for this thing. It's a nice little quick fix this morning. 
for the uh, for this thing. All right, so this is a pretty easy job to do. We're going to move on to the brakes now. You might have a dust cover. You might want to take a heat gun and a pair of pliers to take the dust cover off. This one, these, this mower didn't. Um, I put one on it just to complete it because this is one of those instances where the mower is super nice, and I'm gonna make it look make it look good. So take your washers off and all that. You get to this point, and now we've got your brake adjusters here. So originally, what I tried to do is adjust the brakes using this nut right here. But what happened was I got it too tight and the brake wouldn't even engage anymore. So I'm gonna loosen that up about four or five turns. I'm gonna take, what would that be? A seven sixteenths or a three eighths. Three-eighths. Oh, gotta be careful. We're gonna use an impact to try and get this off because if you break one of these off, it's not, not good. Little WD-40 it up here. We just wanna make sure that we at least get one, one off without breaking it. That's the goal. Alright, so I don't know if I'll get be able to get this one in here, but no, but I can get it here. So that's the first bolt. Hopefully y'all, hopefully my head's not in the way. That's about as good angles I can give y'all too. And uh, it'll come out with the spring, so make sure your spring comes out. Don't lose your spring, because that, that's your return spring so that the brakes will disengage whenever you let off of the brake clutch, whatever you want to call it. Um, now, I'll take the other one off. I got a quarter inch impact here. And that should get me what I need. Gonna be the difficult one, I can tell. Ugh. But you're gonna get that bolt off. Once I get that bolt off, I rejoin you. We'll get it on the bench and we'll uh, get everything to where it's working, lubricated and all that, and we'll be ready to roll. See if I can keep y'all down here without knocking you down. Second bolt's out. We'll take it out. And you got this kind of locking arm that attaches see it's getting pretty rusted take this clip off you have this locking deal right here that kind of attaches to the brake itself and so make sure that you keep that whenever you put it in or whenever you put it back in just put that locking nut right there pull the pin I'll put that back so I don't lose it. And I have brakes right here. Let's take it to the bench. All right, y'all, hopefully this angle is good. We're gonna take everything off here, lube it up. And so, just taking this uh, half inch, half inch nut off first. Don't you love when it gets caught? Here we go. Remember this? washer brake arm okay spring the spring won't come off just lay it in that order 
we get some uh, WD-40 here. Spray it. We've got to free these pins up. This is a very common issue with these craftsmen. Um, what I like to do, I gotta get my hammer, but I'm gonna do a flathead screwdriver. I've got it in the vise here, and we're just gonna hammer the pins out. I could do it either this way or the other way, and I might honestly do it the other way because it's a little bit easier. You can see, I don't know if you can see from that far away, but we've got a little bit of caked on dirt and stuff in there. So, we'll clean that out. We'll let that sit for a second. Let me go get my hammer. Screwdriver, you can use a center punch, whatever you feel. Just something to knock these pins through. Hopefully these aren't too bad. And you do have to give it a very good vice. Let me get a let me get my let me get my chip or um, my center punch and I'll just punch them out. Give me a second. All right, this should work a little bit better with the punch. So it does take a little bit of punching or, you know, hitting it to get it out sometimes. So ooh, don't hit your hand. Feels like it's going. So once you get them out, once you get them out, you're in good shape. I mean, like I said, you just need to keep your vise down pretty good so that it doesn't fall anywhere or go anywhere. I know it's moving because I don't feel the hump anymore. There we go. That's one. And you can see what happens is they just get rusted on the inside and they just end up seizing up over time. You think about it, if you don't use it in the off season for three or four months, you get a lot of rain, you might get a little snow. And just even moisture just from if it's sitting outside, even under some cover, you know. So we'll punch this other one out here while we're at it. There's a the second one. You can see that one's rusted as well. So here's what I do. I had that in pretty good. I'm gonna take a screwdriver and scrape these out right here. I have, it's a very rudimentary way of doing this, but I, I got a brake pad off of a, uh, Spicer transaxle, which is a little bit too big, so I cut it down so it would fit in the hole here, and uh, that's that's gonna work after I scrape out this rust. Um, I had another brake pad, but I ain't got a clue where it is. I'm sure it's in my shed, and I had this old transaxle out here that I'm gonna throw to the dump anyway, so I took the brake off of it. Now the next step, here's what I do. I pop these in the vise. 
Uh, one at a time because that's the easiest way to go. I'm going to get a wire brush and a drill and I'm just going to take these and just wire brush them all around on both sides. I'm going to clean that out and then when we put this back together uh, I'll let y'all join back in. All right should have everything back together here. I cleaned, every, cleaned up the inside of this pretty well. I might wire brush it just Spray it up with WD-40 again, just to, for good measure. WD-40. Alright. Pins also are clean. They should just be able to slide right in. You should just be able to do it by, do it by hand just like that that's perfect the other side uh, it's a little bit more difficult i might have missed a now here we go just need to work it a little bit that's what you want you want it by hand doing just that all right so i have a Squirrel and a cardinal living in harmony out in the backyard eating bird food. <laughs> uh, all right, so next order of business. We will go ahead and put the brake pad on it. Boom. Just like that. And then we will put it back together in the order that we just took this off. So, let's see, what way did it go? It goes like this because this is the top because the indent is for the, uh, the brake, well that'd be the brake pad. And we go towards the front. This went toward the back. Just like so. So that's the way it looks. Putting this on. You don't have to get it ungodly tight because what's going to happen is we'll just go ahead and impact it on here though. A little bit. So what will happen is whenever you pull the brakes out the brake pad won't come off, I promise you that. But when you pull the brakes back, it will engage. I don't know how well I can show this to y'all. Those pins, and as you can see, it's pushed the brake pad. It pushes the brake pad up so that you can stop the mower. So, uh, we're in good shape on that. I'm gonna, y'all saw how I took it off. I'm gonna go ahead and put it all back together and then we'll test it out. I'll level everything. Honestly, the mower is clean enough to where I don't even think I'm gonna have to clean it. I'm just gonna take pictures of it and list it and see if we can get rid of it. I think we're gonna be in good shape. So I ended up finding the original brake pad, which is definitely, it's a little warm, but definitely salvageable. One other thing I forgot is that you have this backing plate that goes into the brake pad area. So the backing plate goes in between the pins and the brake pad. So be sure, sometimes I like to turn these upside down because it makes it a little bit better. So make sure that you've got your backing plate in there for the brake pad. And this brake pad's plenty good. It fits right in there perfectly. So I don't need to use the um, rigged brake pad that I had. We'll go ahead and put this on. I'll show you the final setup. And we're already knee deep in this anyway. So I'll show you what I do to put it back on. Best thing to do first. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not blocking the camera too bad. Take your pin and washer off. Your brake rod, 
Just go ahead and feed this back through so that you don't have to bite it later. Washer, pin. Then we just thread everything back into the holes. Take three eighths. So that's that. Then we put our spring back on. Remember one of remember one half of it goes right around the let's see. One of it hooks right here, and the other hooks around the front bolt. Come on. There we go. So we're all back together. I might have to adjust the brake a little bit, but let's see how it works. Looks like it's working like it's supposed to. Let me put the wheel and tire back on. We're gonna sit it down on the ground. Oh. This tire's got some water in it or something. That's the one I had to put ATF in. All right, this has got a key on it. Make sure you get your key in. A lot of grease in this tire too, or lubricant, whatever. Washers, clip, which I'll get a pair of pliers and clip back on. Every tool except the one you need is always in reach, right? There we go. Let me uh, take the jack down off of it. Good NASCAR style, right? It's not as dramatic when there's not a lot of weight on it. Neutral. Neutral. We're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling. Da da da. There's that brake pad I'll save for in the later day. Brakes on. I need to adjust in a little bit. Still. So let's take the half inch wrench and give it a couple of turns in. See if we can get this thing to grab. And this is that middle bolt that I was talking about. I know y'all can't see it because of the camera, because of the angle, but, oh yeah, it's still fairly loose. It's, oh wow, very loose. It's a fine, not a fine art, but you want it just to where it's not rubbing when you, I think that's going to be about it. Just where it's not rubbing when the when the brakes are off and when they're on, you want it to. Might go just a smidge more. Because you don't want to go too far and then the actual brake arm gets stuck. That should be it right there. Let's see, brakes off. 
rolls freely, brake on, it's pretty not, or pretty not bad, wow, that's what I was about to say, pretty good, let's uh, tell you what, let's go for it, right up and down the driveway, I need to do a little bit of running on that right rear anyways to get the uh, brake right. I'll tell you what, we'll do that here in just a second. Stand by. All right, I'm back. So let's uh, go for a ride. It was lunchtime. Gotta have a little food now and then, right? One thing I've noticed is that this mower sits pretty darn high in relation to the steering wheel. I feel like I've got I feel like I sit higher on this than I do on the other LT-1000 S Craftsman's. Alright, let's go forward. Gotta turn it around up here. backwards neutral get the brakes could be a little better but honestly it's not bad well let's take it for a ride down the driveway pretty good. Alright, they could use a little tightening up, but I mean, I did have a little WD-40 on them too, so that doesn't help matters. But, Let's check the belt to make sure it's not wearing funny. No, I don't see any abnormal wear on the belt. That's a good thing. Which means that it should be pretty in line. I know I was very meticulous on leveling this deck. And I think what happened was on the other mower that I had where I thought it was eating up the deck belts. is because it didn't have any sort of... Um, blade brakes or anything on it so it was trying to continually spin and I think it was like wearing out the belt because it was just sitting there wobbling back and forth but this one seems good um 
I'm looking at it. I probably am going to give it a nice little wash because we're going to give it, we're going to try and get as much money as possible for this thing. But I'm going to make sure the deck is level. I'm going to uh, rob a couple of uh, dust covers from the um, gray counterpart that it came with. And I may, may be able to take care of that, this one here, because I think I've got a deck back there that I might be able to get working to put on this, even though obviously it's not going to command a lot of money. But that's another video for another day. I'm going to get the dust covers off. I'm going to give that one a nice wash and... Um, Make sure the deck is level, like I said, and we're going to list this thing. This will be a good lawn. There's going to be a good lawnmower for somebody. All right, y'all, we are finished with this one. Uh, basically, just took the morning to swap the deck out and fix the brakes on it, which is awesome. Um, easy money. Easy money. Um, don't come around like this very often, but the deck is looks pretty good, much better. No rust holes or anything like that. That is one. This is one that I painted last year to put on a different mower, and it ended up it ended up getting a different deck for various reasons. But let me give you all a walk around. Put the dust covers on the back to make it a little bit better, and uh, we'll start it up. This thing's doing great so there's the look of it and uh like i said we'll finish this video off very thankful to the gentleman who let me buy it from him um ended up being a very good purchase and uh quick fix nothing no surprises which is great uh, apart from the deck and the brakes which is exactly what he told me so that's awesome um, so, you know, $100, I've got it listed for $625. If I get $554, i am happy. Get it out, keep it moving on. So, um, it's really nice. Got this done in one part. A couple of easy things. The people's tree got cut behind me. So they can sleep in peace tonight, knowing that a tree's not going to fall in their house. And, uh, everybody be happy, hopefully. So thank y'all for watching, Ellis Mowers. And, uh... We'll have another fix coming up here on the next video.